The new way government is set to make changes to remunerations of all public servants and the island workforce, including businesses on the island. Honourable Premier Toketa Langi said, Government has proposed to increase all public servants' income as part of transformation initiatives, but it's an overall approach to improve people's income and improve development in all sectors on the island. What is most important at the present moment is for people to realise that we're not just talking about the public service or the government services. We're talking about a whole new way approach to increasing people's take-home pay, pay in their hand, to enable them to get better wealth, better, better living if you wish, better wealth from what we can, we can generate here on the island. Uh, the transformation report that was prepared with respect to the public service is clear in my mind that there are two or three things that we need to focus our attention on. One is the regulatory functions that some departments have. The other is the administrative uh, functions that they have as well. But the other is the businesses that they are trying to maintain at the present moment but don't have the business skills to do things. So we're, we, if you like, teasing out those three areas so that we are very clear as to what we want to do with respect to the transformation of the government departments into very clear focus areas. The second thing, of course, is in relation to if we're going to do this to the, to the people in the public service in, 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 in transforming and increasing their pay by up to 20%. Although Honourable Premier Talangi said government cannot increase private sector income, but there are focused areas that will enable benefits for everyone. And what we're trying to do at the present moment is to look at what we can do with uh, changing the tax structure of those people earning up to $20,000 in the private sector so that they can get the same in their hand um, return, if you wish, as those people in the public service. As well as that, we're going to take care of our old folks and we're going to increase their, their, their amount of money that they will receive, as well as children. We're trying to see whether we can cater. I mean, at the moment, as you're probably aware, we pay $26 per year as a rebate for, for dependent uh, children. I want to see whether we can increase that to $1,000 per year because that would make it more meaningful than what it is present moment. $26 was probably started way back 30 or 40 years ago. We need to change that and, and things. So it's a whole of new way approach that we are trying to achieve at the present moment. We've taken the report that was given to us by Dr. Luffy, dissected it, determined which were the best options that we should take as a consequence of the report to us, and focused on what we can do within the public service. But we're also focusing on the people in the private sector, the companies, the old folks, as well as children and so on. So uh, there is a degree of complexity in this, but it's quite logical. And, and I'm reasonably happy with the progress that we've made. And I'm hoping that we're going to be able to pass the, the appropriate legislation to enable us to do this before the end of this year so that we can pay people before Christmas. Now, how much money are we proposing for, for all these changes? If we're looking at uh, the initial cost to us for, for the changes in public service, it's about $3 million. But since we're starting in Christmas before the middle of next year, uh, it's financial year, then we're looking at about maybe $900,000 within the scope of what we have mm -hmm. and what I've explained. So um, we've, we've got to take the permutations, if you wish, or the the way that we're going to organise this so that everybody gets some benefit in, in a manner that will help them overcome some of the costs that, that are prevailed on, on the people on the island, the prison moment. I like to see people in the private sector also benefit from this as well. Increase our people's pay to be close to or equivalent to what people in New Zealand will earn. We're trying to, to do that. It's not going to be easy, but at the same time, I think it's possible for us to achieve half of it this time and maybe another half before the end of my term as, as Premier. It really is a question of making sure that we earn the revenues. We have, do have the revenues, and as I've said, that's possible with the transformation that is taking place within the public service. But it's also possible with uh, the revenues that are going to be generated by us 
out of our sovereign assets and so on. So is it achievable? Yes, it is. Can we do it before Christmas? I'd like to see it happen, yes. Okay, and uh, talking about money, where are we, um, has government identified where the, this money will come from? About half a million dollars will come out of our trust fund. I think we get about $3 million annually from our interest. Most of that goes back to build, rebuilding the, the capital of the trust fund. Half a million dollars is what we can get access to. Um, $300,000 out of numismatics, possibly some other revenue generating um, thing. I think what's exciting to me at the present moment is the potential that we have to generate revenues out of government bond store. So the proposal is likely to be discussed in next week's assembly meeting. Yesterday's new legislative assembly meeting took less than an hour to complete with six members of parliament absent. Only one motion submitted for discussion, but the MP did not attend the meeting. The motion was moved for from the last sitting to yesterday's meeting. Most of the morning business comprised of reports. The New Republic Service Report for 2009-2011, Treasury 2009-2010-2011, and so did Taungani Wei, as well as Community Affairs for 2010 and 2011. The Administrative Services Report was postponed until the next meeting. The meeting finished with questions from Member of Parliament for Alofi North Honourable Vainga Tukitonga and late yesterday afternoon an advisory was received that the Assembly will resume with another meeting confirmed for next Wednesday afternoon. The APEC or Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation is a 21 member association of economies from the Asia Pacific region working together to advance regional economic integration and prosperity. Established in 1989, APEC has worked to reduce tariffs and other trade barriers across the Asia Pacific region, facilitate business interactions between member nations and improve training and education in international trade. Last week, Honorable Premier Tokitalani attended the meeting and was able to talk to officials expressing the Pacific region's aspirations and the importance of the Americas and larger economies in assisting development as well as the reciprocal benefits the Pacific can assist with its rich resources. Premier Talani said much of the Pacific focus is also on the Tuna Treaty that earns the Pacific $18 million annually and what other gains for the region that can increase Niue's revenue potential. Niue receives just under a million dollars annually from the treaty agreement. The APEC has only one member country from the Pacific region, that is Papua New Guinea. Health staffs were up at the crack of dawn to carry out the National Health Survey for non-communicable diseases that started in the village of Makefu yesterday. This is the very first survey of its type for Niue and in the region that will cover all those aged 15 and above using digital devices to speed up the process. Team leader Manila Norsa says that judging by the first trial, most of those who have been forthcoming have been the much older people and he is trying to encourage more young people to turn up for the survey. The process will require members of the public to sign consent forms, answer a series of questions focused on overall health, also including mental health, body measurements, blood sugar levels and blood pressure levels and more. The survey team will be at villages at 6 in the morning to get people before they head off to school and work. Members of the public have been reminded to fast prior to the survey to ensure that data collected is accurate to help identify the prevalence of non-communicable diseases here on the island. Such figures will also be helpful in assisting those who may be on the borderline of getting NCDs and also forward planning of health services to address the issues that arise from the survey. Some of the health services at the hospital are temporarily affected due to staff being called in to assist with the surveys. Manila says that if all goes according to plan, the health survey team should have at least covered 12 villages completed by the 16th of December. Niue's telecommunications system has gone through another development as part of Telecom's ICT upgrade project. Last week, work began to install new fixed wireless GSM phones in the villages of Liku and La Kappa. Telecom director Tutuli Hacker says that 
the previous analog cellular system utilized by the Alta villages has now become overly congested, and by setting up the new wireless units to these two villages, that will mean a better service for all and less congestion. He says that these new fixed wireless GSM phones will require SIM cards for the phones that will be installed within homes on a postpaid basis with different rates set. Telecom also says that due to the various projects currently being carried out, this has stretched their resources and their ability to respond to some callouts, but they will endeavour to continue operations as normal. Last Saturday, Toy Village was the centre of attention as people popped up to see what was happening as the women of Toy held a mini market. Originally, the village had planned to hold their first show day, like other villages, but there were a few changes along the way. However, the ladies decided to go ahead and put their efforts to good use, setting up stores and selling food, desserts, agricultural produce and more. The hall was also filled with colourful fabrics, woven handicrafts and some interesting bags and hats. Toy may be small in size but big in spirit and they showed that they too can entertain. A great effort from the community and here is looking forward to their first show day which will hopefully be next year. And those are our news stories for you tonight. We do hope that you can join us for our next news bulletin on Thursday.